Um, we have Karen on here, who's here today, but we don't have the recent picture. Let's, you don't even look as big as you used to look in there, but here she is now, nice and skinny, okay? We don't even need to have her picture. Oh, that's before, and now we have her after. So what happens in the day? Oh, I have um, uh, uh, Miss Wanda, who's one of our consultants now. She brought her 83-year-old father here to take the detox class, and uh, they were ready to amputate his toe at Northwestern. At 83, he took the class, the toe healed. Nope. I had a, a, a woman uh, who was a McDonald's executive. Uh, she came with her, uh, t got the letter from her doctor, no longer diabetic. You know, and I'm not talking, I'm not making claims and I'm not talking miracles. I'm talking about your God given right of what your body's designed to do. But you're not motivated to do it because the world isn't set up that way. There are 40,000 Starbucks on every other corner so that you never have to wait more than a minute and a half for your brown liquid that's aiding in your demise. Mm. But nobody's gonna tell you, you're gonna have a few doctors telling you, well, it aids in uh, diabetes. No, it doesn't. But what I do say is, if you are gonna drink caffeine, then change the experience. Don't go to that place where it's a habitual thing. Make organic caffeine for yourself at home. And for God's sake, drink caffeine. Stop drinking dessert. Because that's what most of you are doing. The latte, blah, 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 with the cream and the sugar and the, you know. If you need caffeine, then do caffeine. You know, be real about it. <laughs> Stop playing these games of dessert to wake up. <laughs> gotcha, right? <laughs> so, I, I, so change the experience for yourself. Change it up a little. Start making organic caffeine at home. You know, start doing some alkaline drinks that we're going to talk about beforehand because it's all, all about that homeostasis of the body trying to reach this acid alkaline balance. And most of you are way on the acidic side, way on the acidic side. And the more acid you are, the more acid you want. And it's about bringing that body into balance of alkalinity. That's what it's all about. And that caffeine, you're starting your day off with the acid. I know before I got into all this, if I had pizza the night before, I wanted pizza in the morning. You know, if I had a Coke at night, I wanted a Coke in the morning. So it's about changing that experience for yourself. So do something different. We actually have a couple of products, and I'm going to get yelled at because I made them take it away. But we have a couple of products. <laughs> uh, one is um, Maca Cafe, and I was never a caffeine drinker. That's the only thing I didn't have to give up because uh, my family didn't allow children to have coffee, uh, and we weren't allowed to have Coca-Cola or coffee uh, because my grandfather was born in 1898, and when Coca-Cola came on the, it had real cocaine in it. And so we weren't allowed to have uh, Coca-Cola or caffeine as children. So that was the only thing that I didn't have to break myself away from. Uh, but I'm told that this maca cafe really simulates the feeling of having caffeine. And maca is an immune system builder. And ladies, it's a hormonal balancer. So you get some other benefits from drinking this warm and you make it, no, it may not give you that kick that your caffeine is going to give you, but you put some uh, nut milk in it or almond milk in it and some uh, agave nectar or honey or whatever you use for a sweetener that's not white sugar and you'll have the experience because for many of you it's the experience. That's what Starbucks has done. They've created an experience. It isn't just the caffeine. You go in and they got the music playing and the fireplaces and you know and you know you memorize all the names of all the stuff so it feels like home to you you know and they've created an experience for you so create your own experience at home. And start a little ritual of making yourself some maca cafe. We actually carry a product called um, uh, the, the maca, Gayake Mate Tea. And that is a green tea. And we have a living green tea also that will give you that little bit of a caffeine kick without making your body too acidic like the other caffeine will do. You know, there are ways to change your habits without trying to go from A to Z overnight. There are ways to gradually bring yourself into balance that feels comfortable, unless you've been diagnosed with something major. Then you've got to jump right in and do everything. And for me, having someone detox is the best way to do it. People come to me and go, well, you know, Karen, what should I take for my arthritis? I say detox. Well, Karen, what should I do for my headaches? I say detox. Well, I did a detox two years ago. Have you been living in a bubble for two years? No. Well, then it's time to detox again. That's going to be my answer to everything. Detox, 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 because that's gotten me where I am. Are there other ways? Are there slower ways? Absolutely and you do what feels comfortable for you. But I only feel comfortable giving you what I know to be optimal. And then you work it for yourself. 
So detoxing is, for me, the answer to everything when people come in here. And we have people coming in to take my classes. I teach them every other month. I've been teaching them every other month for about 30 years now. We have people that come from all over the world, all over the city, from Indiana to Blue Island. They come from wherever to take the classes. Um, and 97% of the people get results. And I truly believe that it's for everybody. So how am I so sure of that? It's OK. So if I have you, you came for weight loss, and you came because you have headaches, and you came because you have diarrhea, and you came because you have fibroids, and you came because you have fibromyalgia, and you came before you have eczema, we could go on and on and on with all the symptoms. You all came with different challenges, and everybody gets results. Do you get that? Everybody gets results doing their version of what I say. Because so few people are doing it all perfectly. Every so often you get somebody with a dime in their butt that does everything perfectly to the T. <laughs> and I applaud you. I'm not that kind of person, though. You know. But most of the people are doing their version of what I say, doing the best that they can. And everybody gets results. So what does that tell me? There's one disease. That's what it tells me. There's one disease, a toxic body and poor no assimilation to, of nutrients to your cells. That's it. And then things start to break down. We do a therapy here called live cell analysis where we take a little pen prick of your blood and we put it on the screen and we can see just about, it's like a, it's like a, um, a little picture of the universe of your body in one little drop of blood. We don't diagnose, but we can see and help you to see what's going on. And it's amazing what we see in that one. We see target cells that kind of look like this. It looks like a target. And it looks like a target because the cells haven't formed completely because they haven't had enough nutrients. We see ghost cells literally dying off in front of your eyes because they don't have enough nutrients, some, and some because your cells are supposed to die off and then new ones regenerate. But people's cells are not regenerating, and they're just dying off. But what happens, is, and oh, we see leaky gut, and we see um, different forms, like uh, four-leaf clover-like forms, and that's chemical damage and uh, radiation damage. You know one of the best places to get radiation damage, folks, aside from your microwave and your color TVs and all the other, and your cell phones and stuff, is on a plane. You get the highest concentration of radiation on a plane. Uh, but there are things that you can do to counteract that. You can get a Q-Link or we have these bracelets. And you know, don't ask me about the scientific thing behind them because I just wear them all. When I go on a plane, I put everything on. But I've tested my blood after being on a plane, and I don't have the three-leaf clovers for radiation damage. So the cells aren't fully formed. And so a lot of people like to do this before detox and get a picture of what's going on internally. The cells aren't oxygenated enough, so they're all clumped together. It's called Rouleau. Uh, all kind of too much stress. There's all kinds of things we can see. And then you do a detox and you see it's different. You can actually visually see it's different. It doesn't necessarily all happen in one detox, which is why some people do it multiple times. It takes anywhere from a year to seven, uh, from seven months to a year for a relatively healthy body to turn itself around. It takes anywhere from a year to two years for a person that's strongly challenged to turn themselves around. Yet we want the single bullet. Give me a pill for my arthritis. Give me a pill for my nausea. Give me a pill for this, that, and the other. And by the way, if you're nauseated and sneezing and coughing, God bless you because it's a good thing. Your body is working. When someone comes in here and they says, well, I haven't been sick in five years, you're a time bomb. Because the common cold is the body's way of getting rid of what it doesn't need. I am not a germaphobic. I'm sorry, doctor. I don't know if you're into that either. But I don't believe in germs jumping from person to person. I'm not that delicate. You could all sneeze on me. I wouldn't like it, but I wouldn't get sick. <laughs> I would not get sick. Because my immune system is so strong and a little sneeze isn't going to trigger my body into wanting to detox like your body. Because that's all it is. Your body's detoxing, you sneeze, my body goes, oh, that's a good thing. I need to get rid of some of this stuff, too. Whoever came up with the theory that, oh, I'm sneezing, give me a chemical. Oh, I've got nausea, give me a chemical. I've got diarrhea, give me a chemical. Let me hold all of this inside of me. <laughs> Your body's trying to throw it off. It's doing what it's intended to do. It's trying to get rid of what it can't use. Every disease is the body kind of trying to turn itself around. We just haven't learned to work with it. We don't want to do a chemical to stop it. We want to do a burnout or cut it to stop it instead of working with the body. So I don't believe in colds. I'm not a germaphobic. I don't worry about touching you or you. 
I don't care if you just came out of the bathroom. Of course, I would rather you wash your hands, but I'm not going to be frightened by it. You know, I don't have a 10 second or four second rule for dropping food on the ground. I drop food on the ground. If it's something I'm enjoying, I pick it up and I eat it. <laughs> because I'm not afraid of germs. We're back. We're a lot of bacteria. My ancestors were in the jungle picking their food around zebra poo. You know, they were, I mean, we're just not that delicate. We've become that delicate because we are sanitizing ourselves to death, literally. Where's the quickest place to get sick? Hospital. Well, gee, everybody knew that. <laughs> everybody knew that. Because it's sanitized to death. I'm going to tell you a quick story. I haven't told this story in a long time, but it's true. I had a client many, many years ago. He was a very famous hairstylist. He owned a big salon on Michigan Avenue. And he was dying of cancer, and his family came to me, and they said, they had heard about my program, Dr. Wigmore, and they said, please, can you do something for him? He's in the hospital. I said, well, I really can't get involved with somebody in the hospital because I'm not licensed in anything. And they said, please, just go and see what you can do. So I went to see him in the hospital, and they had him in a big room because he had money all by himself, and he had all these tubes and wires and everything coming out of him. And to go into the room, you had to put a mask on, you know. And here this person is ready to transition, and he's so far away from life. I want to get out of here too. Do you know what I mean? There was nothing human going on. He was in this sterile environment, and nothing could touch him. We couldn't touch him. We couldn't do anything. We had to put a mask, and he's laying there dying, and he's seeing all these people with green masks on their face and hats and shoes and nothing like his life had been and I said you know he really because his skin color changed and everything and he was in the hospital I said there's not a lot I can do but what I can do is I can give you some wheatgrass because the skin remember absorbs just like taking it and you can start to massage it on his skin you can start to rub it into his skin and then I said I'll loan you a wheatgrass juicer a hand juicer and you can get the trays of wheatgrass for me so um, the family decided to do that because I figured if nothing else, the poor man is going to get touched. You know, he's going to have some kind of human experience before he moves on. And so I took, and who knows, the wheatgrass could, I've, I've, seen, I've seen people given six months to live, eight months later, they're still living. You know, so who knows what this could have been the beginning of. So I said, just massage the wheatgrass into his skin. So they said, okay. So I brought them all the equipment. They set everything up. I came to the hospital two days later because I was checking in with them. I should add, the day after I left the hospital, I came back, I had my first restaurant, and I walked in and all my employees said, what happened to you? Because I had been under all the fluorescent lights and I was in that sterile environment and I looked like I was half dead, okay, being in the environment alone. So uh, we have a nurse that works here and she hates to go to the hospital. She does colon therapy. She hates being in the hospital environment. She's but she gets insurance, so she needs to do it. I don't have an insurance plan here. Anyway, there's part of the system, you know, you get them in the system. So I went in the next day and they greeted me at the door. They had on these, they had all of my equipment in these biohazardous bags. They had them in big rags. I may still have them. I always said I was going to use them. And they had put everything in these biohazardous bags and they met me at the door and they said, you cannot bring this stuff in here, get it out. We tested your wheatgrass, it's full of bacteria. Well, yeah, <laughs> and it can't be in the hospital. And, and it was just so sad because everything is so turned around. He needed the good bacteria. He needed that in his system. I mean, the, the, the grass had earthworms in it. I mean, we're talking about nature. We're talking about life. And they had him in this sterile environment. So my husband has instructions, my whole family. When it's time for me to go, I want to be at home. Uh, they actually have people to call if something happens to me because I don't want to be in that kind of environment. I want Marvin Gaye on the, on the <laughs> thing playing what's going on, and I want my family and friends around me, you know, and I want it to be a joyous. I don't want to be in this sterile, horrible environment. But, you know, we need bacteria, folks. We are killing ourselves with this with the sterilization, with ster you know, wherever you go, they got these little things now where you can punch them and sterilize them. There was a commercial on TV telling mothers to rinse their children's toys in Clorox. Yeah. Can I tell you something, moms? Dirt won't kill them, Clorox will. Yeah. 